to set the foundation here in terms of what we're going to cover, right? I want to engage in a covenant with you, if that's all right. Do you guys agree to engage in a covenant? There's a difference between a covenant and a contract. Yeah? We're familiar? Very? Okay. So covenant starts with, I love you, and y'all hopefully will love me. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I love you. You love me. Everything I bring today is from the Holy Spirit, God himself. Okay? You agree to that. I agree to that. I agree. Everything I bring to you, I own nothing. This is all for you. Everything you bring here, you own it. No, you own nothing. It's all God's. All for the glory of God's. Okay, cool. I promise to be open, honest, and transparent with all of the information that I bring with, with you here today. And my hope is that you would do the same back. I want to make this super engaging. I'm talking like person by person, number by number, line by line. What are you going through? How can I help you get to the next level? Like, are you okay with doing that? I'm not interested in talking general finances, general economy. I want to know your economy, what's going on in your household. So if you're open, honest, and transparent, I could put your numbers right here on the board and we go line by line to debt freedom, creating wealth, all for the kingdom, all for the glory of God. Are you guys up for that? Amen. You ready to do that? Amen. If it's okay with you, we can dive right into it. We can skip the whole intro, who am I, da, da, da. Anybody did the homework, get your numbers, bring your, who said yes? Okay. You got your numbers? You want to go first? She's like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Uh, mm -hmm. Everything. You brought it all? You ready? You want to go? Okay. Can we get her a mic? Oh. You ready for this? We're all family. Listen, open, honest, transparent, no judging whatsoever. This is what I do day in and day out with my clients. I actually have a client here today. How you doing, my friend? Matter of fact, can we get a, uh, you know what, can we pass the mic to my friend Tim here real quick? And um, I just want you to share a little bit about how we connected, your testimony personally. You just threw me like, threw in the, for right, a loop. Right, All right, right I'm rolling with it though. <laughs> All right. So intro. Yeah. How we met, mm -hmm. and then talk to them how how it is that we work together. Like like. Sure. What we did. Yeah. So uh, my name's Tim Kubiak. Um, I'm an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> I know I'm in, I'm in AA country here, right? The founder of Alcoholic Snobs, but I truly am an alcoholic, right? Sober sober ten years. Um, Amen. And. Um, um, you know, I've been a follower of Christ for, for a long time, but, you know, I, I've had a lot of sin in my life. Um, and during COVID, I, I really wanted to get my finances in order. I had like a, a 550 credit score. I was in like $42,000 in debt. Um, and I just really, and I, and I wanted to own some property, right? I wanted to like have some of that American dream. Um, and I just didn't know how to go about it. Uh, you know, in school, they don't teach you about finances and stuff like that. So, and my, my parents weren't good at it either. Like my mom knew how to balance her, her checkbook and she actually worked uh, at the city of San Jose in the accounting department, but she didn't take the time to teach her children how to do this thing, right? So I was just kind of uh, trying to figure it out on my own. I wasn't doing a very good job managing my money. And I watched this YouTube video it wasn't even Denzel initially. I forget her name, but she was talking about how to pay off your house within four to seven years using this velocity banking thing. Don't, the one with the accent, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then another video popped up with Denzel, and I started watching his content. Now, I watched him for a long time. I didn't jump on board right away, um, but I watched him for a long time, and then he offered, like, um, 
uh, there's like a an uh, intro package. I think it's like a hundred dollars or four ninety nine, something like that. And then he allows one one coaching session. Is that is that right, Denzel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was our time. So, so I did the one coaching session. I got all my numbers together in an Excel spreadsheet, or actually the sheet that that Denzel sent over. But I also had one of mine that was a the mess. one that's in your folder. Yeah. All right. And uh, so I fill all that to the best of my ability, and and then we actually did a live one-on-one -on -one coaching, and now it's on his his uh, his platform, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so, and then I decided, like at the end of the year, I was really on the fence to become a lifetime client, uh, but I saw the value in working with Denzel, and I was seeing results. Like that that forty-two thousand dollars, I brought that all the way down to like sixteen hundred bucks, right? In, in, in a short period of time. And now, um, you know, I, I was, it, it took me a while. I was using credit cards to do the velocity banking at first. And then um, I think I applied at one bank for, for a line of credit and I didn't get it. And I was super bummed. Um, but then I worked with my, because their interest rate was lower, then I worked with my credit union. I, I tried again at six months later and I got it through my credit union. Um, and they, they, I only wanted like twelve or 15000 and they gave me 18000 I was like blown away, right? Uh, so I started doing the, the velocity banking, chunking away at my debt. And, um, and then now, um, you know, I've, I've racked up some debt on my credit cards now, but most of them are, are low or, or, or uh, no interest. And now I am actually, I just put an offer in on a duplex, um, first time property owner. I, I went through the FHA process um, and my family helped me out a little bit. Um, and it's all from like managing my money. And so it's actually gonna be an investment property. So I'm gonna live in the top unit and I already have a renter that's, that's locked in there for a year and hopefully we'll close on July 15th. So this is all like blessings I received. You know, I wanted a four unit, but I got a two. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm happy, I'm blessed, right? Um, so the- yes. <laughs> Yeah, round of applause. So the goal is to get a four unit next, right? And then there's other uh, solutions out there where I can use a, a home equity line of credit, uh, an all-in-one loan to, to pay down my, my property faster and I'll also build more wealth. I'm gonna work with Denzel on, on the infinite banking side of things soon here. Uh, by getting a, a, a lifetime uh, insurance, whole life insurance policy. Uh, not only benefits me, but it also benefits my family in case something happens to me. So there, there's a lot of great benefits there. Um, and there's a lot of other stuff that Denzel can teach you, uh, but I, he's, there's so much content. Like, I think you have over 300. Uh, 600 bin, plus. 600? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm about 50%. There's so much comfort, uh, like content on his a platform, but I found it extremely valuable. I'm super blessed to know you. He, he like is very uh, personable and, and just gives his time. And I, I'm just kind of blown away by the price that you offer for your lifetime clients, right? It's just amazing. So I, I see that you have a giving heart. You started out to help your mom and other single mothers. You know, I came from a single mother home too, so I relate you know, and um, now you're giving back to the community and, and I hope to do the same in the future. So thanks for letting me share. Thank you. Thank you so much. Round of applause for that. All right, back to you. You are not off the hook. <laughs> All right, so introduce yourself. Well, hello everyone. I'm Sister Stephanie Peterson. Okay. I'm a member of the Light Church here. Okay, pleasure to meet you. And uh, tell me a little bit about what you do for work. A little about yourself, how you came to Christ, a um, little, little, little intro. Okay, um, I um, I am an office manager for the Summit County Department of Job and Family Services. Um, and I've been there about uh, 29 years. I'm a single individual, I guess. <laughs> I do own a home. I own a, a car. Okay. Um, and I have two children and three grandchildren. You said you were a single mom? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. My kids are grown. So. Okay. Okay. Pretty interesting how, how uh, just out of everybody, you raised your hand. My whole mission, vision is helping single moms. That's my first client was my mom. Helped her pay off all her debt. Get her credit up. Cash flow. She just got. She just passed her real estate license exam. Um, 
this year she was able to retire from her job because her little boy said, hey, uh, I'd like to pay you to leave your job that you work 40 hours a week and come work in the business. Come work with me. Doug. Ain't that amazing what the Lord can do when you rely on him? Oh, my goodness. So, you know, Tim was like, I don't know how you charge so low. I'm like, because God provides. So I, I don't need to profit. I, I have to profit as a business. Obviously, that's commercial jurisdiction. But in God's jurisdiction, there's an infinite amount of resources. It's incredible when you're able to have the keys to the kingdom, right? The keys. It's a, it's a key. Not no crystals, right? Uh oh, I just offended somebody. Not no stones, not no incense. Okay, there's keys to the kingdom. And it's as simple as putting the key in the door and turning it. Matter of fact, in some cases, you don't even need the key, you just need a knock. And the Lord will answer the door. Oh my goodness. So let's dive right into the numbers, if that's all right with you. Yeah, because my, my goal is to try to, like I said, I just bought a house and I'm trying to pay it off. And, <laughs> Just eliminate some debt. I don't have, well, my house is probably my biggest debt that biggest I have. Debt. Okay. Um, I don't, but I'm just trying to, you know, get a handle on it. I need to get a budget, and, you know, and just mm -hmm. stick to it. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. So you would say one of your main primary financial goals is to eliminate debt? Yes. Okay. Yes, at this point, yes. At this point, right. And like you said, get a budget together. So right. we need to get some foundations. There's some, some pregame work that needs to be done. And then after that, let's say once we have the budget in line, you've been knocking out debt. Is there a desire to run a business, um, increase income in that arena? Um, I really, no, I haven't thought of a business. Um, okay. I've been a worker all my life. Just work three okay. jobs, four jobs. Uh -huh. Just, I don't, so no, I haven't really thought about a business what is god's purpose for your life um what's the first thing that comes to mind well but uh, through my life and my testimony it would be to tell people about christ the good news i mean that's what i love to do um but as far as like a gift in the church you mean or what's god's purpose for your life And it's okay. I if, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if I know exactly that's what. That's okay. Is it okay if we work on that this weekend? Like, yeah, we Like get crystal that. clear. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Because that is what unlocks what you need. Okay. All right, cool. That'll work. That'll work. Slides wasn't working, so we're going to have to have to go like that, right? Or like a switch. We'll work on that. So if we can unlock what your purpose is, get crystal clear on it, whether that's in the ministry, out of the church, in the church, there's a, there's a business that comes with that. That's, that's God's business. And there's revenue that must be generated in order to do the work that we want to do. It requires money, right? Whatever it is that you want to do, it requires money to accomplish that. It's just a tool. It's nothing we need to worship. It's just a tool that we have access to in this world system, right? In, in God's system, it's faith is currency, right? And in the world, it's, it's money. And being able to operate in both, in the world, not of it, right? And, and attaching a business model to fulfill that purpose, get paid abundantly for that, and now you can be an abundant, cheerful giver. We saw that. So let's let's start with your four major numbers, right? So what is your monthly income to date? Oh, uh, I don't have that. Um, you can give me an estimate. Um, you said you work three jobs currently? two jobs right now. Office manager is the main one? Yeah. Okay, what's the second one? The 
second one, I work at, uh, I'm a cashier at Big Lots. Okay. So let's get, let's, let's help her out. Let's get an estimate. What do you, what do you think you're bringing in on a, on a monthly basis so far? And I should know, that's probably one of my problems. I should know what I'm bringing in. Uh-huh. Trust me, you're not alone. There's other people in this room that don't know what they make as well. So you're just, you're just the first, <laughs> right? And now everybody else has an opportunity to be like, oh my God, he's going to ask me how much money I make. All right, okay. And by the way, this is okay. This, this, this pause and the, like, we need to take time to look at these numbers to unlock our, our gifts in, in the physical realm, in, in the world. That's what we're going to be dealing with mostly here today. There ain't no issue. I don't have to convince anybody in this room on the spiritual side. You're already saved. You're born again. You're worshiping. You got all that stuff, and that's like 80% of it. 80, you guys know about the 80-20 rule? It's like 80% up here, 20% mechanical. I specialize in the mechanics, the 20%. Right? I'm a baby in Christ, by the way. Like, I just got saved not too long ago. Like, I, I got saved a couple times. I was born in the Catholic church, baptized there, grew up, right? did the whole thing, and then started coming to different Christian churches. It was very curious. From a, from a logical aspect, I'm like, what is this thing? I need this thing to be proven on paper. Like, show me this dude is real, right? And then I went through it, and I came to the conclusion, yeah, this, this guy died, rose again. Okay, 500 plus witnesses saw him after he rose. Interesting. Right after he dies, was it eight years later, the first book was written, something like that, versus you look at all the other religions, right? It took hundreds of years before they started writing their religion versus ours in the kingdom. I mean, we're talking very short span. So the, the, the information that Jesus told his, his disciples and the, the preaching that he did, all of that was be able to get formulated in that short period of time so that the, the, the information doesn't get diluted or um, corrupted, right? So... Once I went through all that and I discovered, I was like, oh my goodness, all right. And so my, I simply repented, changed my way of thinking. That's what that means, right? Repent, change your way of thinking. And so now I solved the, 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 the spirit part. That's, the, that's like 80% of it, I think, right? Maybe even more than that. And so today we just got to deal with the mechanics of our numbers and so that it can sync together, right? So while I'm talking with Stephanie, right? You guys, start writing your numbers down. I'm going to come to you one by one. I'm like serious. I want to know how we can help each and every one of you become debt-free, increase cash flow, increase income, right? I was talking with Pastor, and he was saying that he's got a, I think, a two, three-year goal, if I'm not mistaken, to literally everybody in here debt-free. Now, my my logical number is five to seven years is, is how I help people become debt-free, five to seven years. Now, the 80%, the spiritual part, the trusting God, that's how that number shrinks. Logically speaking, I can show you how to pay off all your debt within five to seven years or less, without a doubt. But then you add the spiritual side of it, believing God to do it, like he's going to make it happen, that can cut that time frame even shorter right and so i know with you all here right in, in my day-to-day -day practice i'm dealing with non-believers atheists lgbtq community i mean you name it all walks of life so i approach it logically but here i don't have to worry about the spiritual part that's covered now we can just get right into the, the mechanics right so what do you got i know i just is that, took is that some time gross with Nat you're talking about <laughs> gross let's 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 do you know what let's do net because that's what you take home what you right. actually see right so let's look at net monthly income so i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm gonna say 35 between both jobs yeah okay 3500 a month all right and with that how much are you spending total this is the debt payments 
the living, taking the kids to and from school, the food, the gas, all that stuff. And get a little. Well, my kids are grown, so I don't have to do any. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, as far as expense, it, it would just probably be my utilities, mm -hmm. my house note, and my car note. Right. Light bill, insurance, internet. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Take some time. While she's working on that, you all do the same thing. Open that folder. There's a, there's a financial spreadsheet where you can see all the different, you know, lines and really evaluate where you are at today. All right? Our, our first objective, th this is before I do anything with anyone, I get their four major numbers. I, I can't move forward unless I know the numbers, right? I've had clients tell me their whole life story. And I'm like, that's nice. Thank you for sharing. Now, what are your numbers? <laughs> right? Because I'm like, you can tell me all the things that you've been through and all the, all the hell and all the good and the bad and the ugly in between, but I need that. And then we can move forward. We get crystal clear on this, four major numbers. Then we move to the next step, which is the concept, right, of, say, velocity banking or most of you should be aware of debt snowball, debt avalanche, Dave Ramsey, seven baby steps, right? Everybody in here very familiar with that? I'm Dave Ramsey certified myself as a, as a master financial coach. So I bring both to the table. I took everything that Dave Ramsey did over the last, what, 30, 40 years of his career, right? Teaching fundamentals. And then there's um, the modern day gurus of the world, the Tony Robbins, the Grant Cardone's, the Robert Kiyosaki's, you guys know these people, right? They're more high level, they're very anti Dave Ramsey, right? So Dave Ramsey's like, debt's bad, avoid debt like the plague, right? Cut your credit cards up. And then these modern day gurus are like, hold on, debt is money in, in the 21st century. Like, debt is money. Debt is how you create wealth extremely fast, extremely fast. So these guys learned how to leverage it. Now, oftentimes, there's people that are like kind of stuck in between. Well, they're like, oh, I don't know how to manage debt yet. So does it make sense for me to take on more debt to get out of debt? That could sometimes be a conflict. So you've got Grandpa Dave Ramsey, you've got Uncle G, and you've got Cousin D. I'm in the middle. Right, I, I, I bring both and I try to make sense of it and give you the step by step for you specifically. Here's what you got to do once you get to this point, you feel comfortable, just like Tim. Right, once you feel comfortable during doing these certain steps, then he got position, boom, then he started doing it. And then within months, he what was it, 30 something thousand, all the way down to. Talk about know your numbers. <laughs> and then it went all the way down to what? In that time frame, because I know you added more debt. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Velocity banking with a credit card, right, or credit cards, right. There's, there's, there's options, so. Where are we at? Okay, so so the bills that I added up is like, it's my house note, mm -hmm. my life insurance, yeah, let's my go. cell phone bill. You know, what? you know what? Let's go one by one. My I mean, I just added the numbers. My utility okay. bills, which is my water, gas, and electric. Okay. And then my car note, my life, my car insurance, and then Wi-Fi. Those are bills that are always. Always. They are, they, yeah. And then the other half, of course, is when I go spending. I have food, the gas, card. right? Oh yeah, the gas and the credit food. card and the food. Miscellaneous house products. Right. right, but these bills, I know that I make sure I take them out because they automatically I have to pay these. What's that all total the time. amount? What's that total amount? So that total was like one thousand three hundred seventy-four dollars. Okay. Seventy-four. Yeah, but that yeah. Okay, so, so I don't know how I would add in like the credit card because I didn't add those in like the credit cards that I own. You're talking about debt. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When you pay your credit cards on the due dates, are you paying the monthly minimum or are you paying a little bit more? What have you been doing? I currently? pay more. 
pay more? Yeah. Okay, so kind of walk me through the, the different debts that you have, right? Because this number does not include any debt payment. No. Not even the mortgage. No, the mortgage is there. I'm sorry. Okay, so the yeah, mortgage so is in there. That's my car note, my house note, my life insurance, my uh, car insurance, and the utility bills. Okay. So then let's go over the kind of like the consumer debts, the credit cards, student loans, personal loans, all that. Let's go one by one with that. Do you have those with you? What is it? The credit, you said the credit cards or no? Yeah, let's start okay. with credit card debt. Okay. Start there. I do have, um, so I have, a, this, you want the names of the cards or just how much? Just the uh, balance owed and then what the monthly minimum payment is. Okay. And then what you pay per month. Because I know you said you pay a little extra. Yeah. Can you, you want to, I kind of read it, wrote it down. Okay. If you want to look at this, maybe this might help a little bit. That works. I tried to do a little homework. That works. Let's see if you can understand that. Yeah. Beautiful. If it says zero, that means I don't owe anything, right? Correct. These are the only debts you have? Yes. No student loans? No student loans. No personal loans? No personal loans. No IRS debt? No IRS debt. Okay, cool. All right. Does that make sense? Can you understand that? Yeah. What I got written down. So now, the only thing that's missing is what you pay per month, right, on these things. So let's start with the Discover. I owe... Nine sixty six ninety nine at zero percent, right? So, do you know what the monthly payment is on that? Well, I've been paying one hundred and fifty a month on okay. that. Okay, so you've been paying one fifty on that. Gotcha. Because I was trying to get it down because it's zero percent. I try and pay it off before the time period. Yeah. Okay. BFG credit. I owe two thousand. Four eighty four, three four, and for those that are, um, you know, listening, even the ones at home that are listening, what you want to be doing is gathering your four major numbers, and when you're listing out all your debts, what I need to know is the balance owed, right? The interest rate that you're paying. Okay, so start with balance owed, interest rate, the monthly minimum payment of your debt. And then what you're paying, right? If you're overpaying, right? So if you're not overpaying, then you just put the monthly minimum payment. But if you are overpaying, then show that number, right? And that's how I want to see all of your debts. Everybody in here, list it out. So when I go to the next person that's in debt, wants to get out of debt, has a desire to get out of debt, move forward with the finances, you'll notice how the first case is going to take the longest. But then as we start going throughout this weekend, it's going to be like, really fast, right? Because as I'm going through it, I'm also letting you know the principles, how we borrow, how we leverage, how we position ourselves, all that good stuff. So Stephanie, I owe 24, 84, 34 on that. And what's the interest? Oh, well, I got the interest rate, I think. Uh, no, I don't. Um, what's the monthly payment on this? Um, or what, I, what do you I think pay? I try and pay 150 on that so one. So you try too. to pay 150 yeah. on this too as well. Right? I know my numbers are not going to add up. That's okay. And uh, U.S. Bank is only uh, 252 owed on that. Right? What's the month? What do you pay on that? Um, you know, I, that's kind of like a new credit card, and it's like an overflow. So I really can pay whatever on that, I think. But... Um, do you typically, like you said, it's a new card? I need card. to pay it off is what I need to do. Like you, <laughs> you, you, you could pay it off in one shot? I probably could if I concentrated. Okay. Because that's the smallest balance. Right, right. In the debt yeah. snowball world, that would be the first debt that we would typically go after. So um, with whatever your remaining cash flow is, that's what we would attack it with. So the 1500 is on 0% as well, right? The Home Depot? 
Yeah, I just bought a new stove and refrigerator, and I, I did get 0% interest on that, but I just got the first payment, and I think it said $50. Okay. I think so. I can't remember. And are you overpaying it or just paying the 50 I, I Actually, I, have not, I just got it. Like When I say I just got it, I just got it. Just so got I just it. got the payment, and, and I wish I would have brought it. Mm -hmm. I just got the bill yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I haven't started making the payment. The first payment is due in July. What day? I don't remember. Okay, that's fine. Are you planning on paying the 50 or paying more? I, I'm planning on paying more because what I usually do when I get 0% interest, I divide the total sum by 11 months. It's 12 months, and I'll divide it by 11 months, and I'll pay whatever the price is to get it paid off. That's what I try and do. This is on 12 months? Zero it's interest? on 12 months. Okay. Divide by 11. So 136 is what you would roughly pay. Okay. Cool. And when it comes to the velocity banking concept, you're, you're new to it, correct? I do not know what that is yet. Don't even know what that is, no, right? Haven't watched any not. videos? All right, so whenever I'm in a situation like that where I'm dealing with someone that has no idea about velocity banking, there's, there's pregame work that we need to solve for. Um, one of those main things is the redirection of cash flow, right? Looking at what is she currently doing with her money and is there a more efficient way of paying off the debt, paying down the debt, even before starting Velocity Banking, right? One key tip here, if you're taking notes, cash, cash flow together is much stronger than separated, right? Cash flow together is stronger than when separated, just like a church is stronger together than when they try to do things by themselves, right? Works the same way with your cash flow. If you're trying to send money to all your different debts, I'm going to pay a little bit here, I'm going to pay over here, I'm going to pay over here. You're sending your money to die with interest, right? Versus when you group all the dollars together, it becomes stronger. You're able to attack each and every debt and really uh, lower that interest. In many cases, offset your borrowing costs. So these are the only debts that you have including the the mortgage and the car note but that's included in here yes right so it's 150 150 and i guess we can just call this 50 bucks or something like that right. but technically that would be the first debt we go after you're gonna you're technically paying uh, or planning on paying that so that's 300 so 436 right in addition to the 1374. So 1374 plus 436. Saw that, right? Just adding the three, everybody with me? Okay, so we're at 1810 now is her total cost, right? Now, Stephanie, are you saving money, investing money, tithing? Right? Is there anything that you're doing on top of this number? Yeah, I am tithing. Okay, and how much do you uh, give per month? $200. Okay. And do you save money? Don't look at them. Don't worry. <laughs> Just look at me. They're, they're not here. They're here in spirit. All right, no judging. I guess so. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I can't give you a number. I don't know. Let's just estimate. From from your recollection of, say, the last six months, you know, in any given month, how much money would you put aside? You know, if it's a, if it's a good month. I don't know. I just don't, I don't think I save like that. I mean, it could be just me, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you're not saving, right? So you want to go with not saving? 
Let's go with not, what, not structured saving. Okay, we can go with that. Are you investing any money? I mean, I have like my retirement investments like that, yeah. From, from the job? Yeah, I've got... So it automatically comes out of your paycheck? Right, most okay, definitely. Okay, so then I'm not going to count that because you net this, right? You're netting. Yeah, 35. that's not my gross. That's my net, yeah. So, it, so you're not investing when you receive the net, right? Because it's already coming out of the gross. Right. So we don't see it. No. Right, and that goes into a 401k or right. something like that, right? Yeah, I have OPERS. It goes into OPERS, and then I have... Um, Another retirement. I've got a couple of retirements that come out into different things. Mm -hmm. Right, but you're not adding I'm anything not adding, additional. I'm not adding to it from no. that. Okay. No. So we went from eighteen ten plus two hundred. Now we're at two thousand ten. So that means you're bringing in thirty five, spending two thousand ten. Would you say that you're cash flowing fourteen ninety? Is what now? Would you Would you say that you're net cash flow? money left over after all bills debts are paid you've got roughly fourteen hundred dollars left over yeah maybe a little less what would you say i say a thousand let's say a thousand say a thousand yeah so you can honestly say that at the end of every month you look at your bank account and there's usually about a thousand bucks in in excess Money that's not going anywhere. Well, I ain't going to say it's not going anywhere because it's probably going toward food, gas, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So, let's, I mean? so let's, I have, yeah. let's add that. Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't added. So just so everybody's on board here, we've gone over, we've covered all the debt payments that she has. We've covered the, like, the consistent bills, but we haven't gone over the non-guaranteed bills. That's your food, gas, miscellaneous, here and there, going out, entertainment, going on a date, da, da, da. So let's, let's go through that, right? So how much do we spend on food and gas per month, roughly? And you can estimate it. It doesn't have to be, like, totally accurate for, for just this current session. I'm going to probably say with the gas... Probably 120. You sure? Gas went up. <laughs> yeah, because I think I filled up on like 65. So if I do that twice. Okay. So you fill up about twice a month? Right. So, that, so that's. And that's with the high prices. It wasn't that before, but now it's. So 130. Yeah, let's say 130. So 130, that's gas. Let's do food. What are we doing on food? That I don't one. do a lot of food because it's just me and my household. So I don't have to buy a lot alone. of food. I live alone. Okay. So I don't have to buy a lot, but if I was to guess. Oh, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to just say $100 a month. It may, it may be $150, but I, I don't know. That's, see, this Let's is my problem. This is That's my problem. Okay. I don't keep track of stuff like this. That's I okay. Just... For the first time in God knows how long, we've spent roughly 30 minutes so far on your finances. That's most any other person has done. Most people don't spend 20 minutes on their money. They, and, just, they just work and live, work and live, work and live. And the thing about it is I, I do try and, as you see, I wrote that down, so I do... Like, most of my interest rates are zero. My credit is good. I don't have bad credit at all. I, I mean, my car note is zero percent. Mm -hmm. My house um, in, uh, percentage is 2.5. So I've got good credit, but I know I could be doing more with what I have left over, and that's my problem. Yep. I, I think I make the wrong decision when it's time to, oh, I can do that. I can spend. I'm being honest with everybody, yeah. so I, I and should spend. And, and I honor so you. This is my issue. I honor you. I recognize you, and I love you for being open, honest, so and transparent. Be because transparent. that's how a guy like Tim went from boom to where he's at now. Is that yeah. is that openness? Like here, <laughs> here's where I'm at. 
So is it safe to just round it up, call it 200 yeah, that, for food? That's fine. That's throwing in maybe Uber Eats and some eating out here and there? Or should I add that? No. Add a little more. <laughs> well, I, had, I was eating out a lot, but... You cut back? I kind of cut back a little bit. I cut bit. back too. Yeah. My girlfriend and I, we was going out yeah, every I, weekend. Yeah, I tried, I tried to cut back a little bit. Put on some weight. Now I got a dad bod going on. <laughs> Not even a father yet. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, Lord. All right. So 200 is safe for food. That's right? fine. Yeah. Safe. Food, gas, now house products, right? Most of us overlook this toothpaste, the toothbrush, shampoo, conditioner. I, this stuff adds up, right? Toilet right. paper, baby wipes, hand wipes. Uh, what do you do when you wash your hands? What's that called? Soap, right? So Dish detergent, laundry detergent. What do we got? I've got a method to that. Now, that's why I keep my job at Big Lots. <laughs> so what I do you got the, is like you, you we got get 30% like maybe four times a year. So that's the only time I buy those products. That's you, the only time I buy paper towels. You buy in bulk. Well, it's not, well yeah, I buy a bunch I, when we have it. Like we just had it recently here. So I think I bought six packs of paper towels. I bought this detergent. You know, I, I buy all my stuff all at once, so maybe like four times a year. I just get that when we so, have our 30, when we get our 30%. Okay, so that's, that's four times a year, so pretty much once a quarter, every three months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how much are you spending in that one instant? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number, I'm going to times it by four, and then divide it by 12 to get a monthly amount. Let's see. Um, I probably spent. And you can well, overestimate it. It's okay. Yeah. Let's say, um, 200. 200. So that's 800, right? And then 800 divided by 12. So we'll call it 80 bucks a month. Right? I'm overestimating now. Right? And that's. House maintenance. That I covers. Mean, and that's a little bit of everything because I. A little bit of everything. I right? probably went over a little bit this time because my grandkids came. So I was buying all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but, but like I said, the majority, I never buy any of those products without it not being on. Like we get 30%. So if I buy two, I get one free. So, so I'm always buying it on those, you know, whatever. But I did buy a little bit extra this time because I was buying stuff for them and. Slides. But like I said, I just need to manage better. I do, I do know that. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Right, right. This right. is managing, right? So congratulations again. Round of applause. <laughs> right? This is incredible how, how open you are being with this right now. Like, how many, how many people we got live stream right now? Because I sent, like, an email blast to my whole audience. <laughs> how much we got? Anybody know the number? How many people watching live? Hopefully not a lot. They could look. Let me know, because I want to say hello to them as well, for those that are, you know, watching at home. So, 80 on the house, house maintenance stuff now. Entertainment. This is, you know, movie theater, going out, spending time with the, with the grandkids, with the, you know, with your kids, with mom, dad, you know, just like random stuff. Well, if I go according to January, which this year I said I wasn't going to any concerts, so I have not been to any. Okay. Um, I haven't been to the movies, so I really don't do a lot of that anyway. Um, because last year I paid two hundred dollars for Charlie Wilson tickets <laughs> for me, my dad, and some. I spent so this year I said I was not going, and I'm being honest. So I have not gone to any concert. Okay. I don't care who came into town. I didn't go to any funny factories or laugh. I haven't done any of that. Okay. I went to one concert and it was free in the park. Okay. Um, and that was it. So I, I'm kind of sticking to that. You've been sticking to that. I've been sticking to that. But I want to add it anyways, just to create a buffer. In addition to redirecting, redirecting cash flow to get some accurate numbers, I also create a buffer. And the reason why I create a buffer is so that once I run the numbers, I say, okay, you should be here by this point, this time. And then when you actually start doing it, you beat my numbers. And I would argue that creates like this momentum 
right? And you're like, oh my goodness, I'm beating Denzel's numbers, right? So I'm going even faster. So let's just create a buffer. Should I, should I call it $200? Not a month, right? <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. For entertainment, I mean, maybe I'm, 100? Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I mean, you can say it, but I, I know that I'm willing, to sa- I'm willing to sacrifice that part. I don't right. have to do that. That's cool. But I know we're human and we sometimes we break <laughs> and we're like, okay, right? You go here, you go there. Um, there's birthdays. That come oh, up yeah, every I year. Do birthdays, so yeah. I yeah. Call, I now that's another that. story. Birthdays or graduations or uh-huh. you know, I do give holidays. Gifts for that. So yeah, that can go in there. Mm-hmm. Most so definitely. Can we call it hundred dollars a month? Is that safe? I mean you can, but I don't yeah. Right. So how many kids you say you have two, right? I have two. Right. So that's two birthdays. Then there's your birthday. And mom and dad still living? My dad is. Dad, that's a birthday. Uh, anybody else, like, any any holidays you will celebrate, like Christmas and, um, and New Year's and Fourth of July? My kids, sorry. That's all right. Um, okay, so I had did make, I had made some decisions um, this year. Now, see, if I'm going by this year. So this year I made decisions. I told my kids that... Um, that I wouldn't be traveling, but I'm bringing the, the kids actually came to me. Mm-hmm. So, but, um, so I don't know if you want to add something. I mean, I do. You do. <laughs> What's that number? 100 or 150? <laughs> Just put 100. 100. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, so let's. Let's see where we're at now. Any, here's the next thing. A lot of y'all forget this. Your subscriptions, Netflix, Hulu, Disney, da, 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 right? Spotify, Pandora. I've been blessed on that one. Everything I got on my TV is free. Really? It's somebody else's account. On some of that. <laughs> oh, they gonna come for you. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> they, they gonna come for you. Y'all so heard? I, but I got all, I got Netflix. I got I got everything. Okay. But it's it's my nieces, my daughters. I, I don't okay. pay for any. You don't pay for none of that. I don't pay for any of that. Okay, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. It is. I, I've been blessed. Although. And I, and I, count your blessings, because ne- Netflix coming after y'all. Remember they they posted it. I know. It? I know. <laughs> but when, when so when it says too many people are on this site, I just turn my TV off. Okay, that's good. <laughs> That's, That's what good. I do. We, we included cable in here, right? I don't have cable. Okay, so I'm, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I don't have cable. It's been no, a long time, but we, I don't have We cable. included internet in there, right? Internet is free right now. Everybody knows better. Where does she live? <laughs> Hold on. That's some blessings. The internet is free. I mean, right now, until they stop paying for it, I'm a, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a free service. It started when COVID started. You know what I mean? It is. Okay. So I. Praise yes, the Lord. I, All right. So now I'm at $2,520 total expense. Right? I'm going to end up in the red. I know. 30, <laughs> 35 minus 2520. So now we're. You know, we're getting a little more accurate here now. 980 is the cash flow so far. And I'll be done paying for my car in, in December, too. I'll be so glad. Okay. So based on what you said, we're rolling at 35 coming in, 25, 20 coming out, 980 left over. From that 980... Right, and this is you being open and honest. You're saying that that money just goes, right? It, it something comes up, an emergency, right? Someone gets sick. Okay, gotta pay this. So right. let's let's create another. Um, we could take. Let's see. We could take like a hundred off the top. Right. For example, before I came today. Um, my, I was here the other day, and my tire was going flat. And I'm like, um, so I just put some air in it. 
I tried to fix the problem, but this morning I woke up, it was flat again. So, you had to get so I ended up getting a, it's a used tire, but I put a used tire. And I think it cost me like $45. $45, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I have pop-up things that come up, yeah. and that's. So we can add another 100 for uh, uh, unexpected expenses, right? So now we're at 2620 right? So that brings the cash flow down to 880 Okay. All right. Anything else you can think of? Oh, I get my hair done every two weeks. There we go. How much is that? Nails and feet? <laughs> no. No? You do it yourself? Yeah. Do you spend money on makeup? I do, mm -hmm. but not a lot. Uh, yeah, I do. What's the amount? Monthly. But you know, it lasts so long. I don't have to buy it every month. True. You know, it True. lasts a long True. time. So just like you do with big lots, right? Every three months is, would you say that's about how you do with your makeup as well? Like every three months or so you buy face, face products, acne reduction, anti-aging. What did we say? How much? <laughs> for for your um, makeup year, for a year or a month. Let's. Well, I want to try and break it down in a in a monthly. But you said that it lasts a few months. Right. So I'm assuming it lasts. It lasts a long two, time. Two two three months. Would you say? No, it lasts longer than that. Longer than that. I so, mean, I could say 150 a year, probably. I don't. I don't buy a. All right. So it, it lasts. That's just makeup. Well, that, no, that's including everything. That's including the yeah. hair too. No, no. Yeah, because that's the, no. The hair is a lot is, more. Uh, All right, okay, so I'm gonna go with your 150 number. I'm gonna round it up. Call it 200. Right. Divide that by 12. That's 16 dollars a month. Right. Roughly. So 16 in makeup products. Right. Hair. Every two weeks, you get it done. 120. 120. A month. Okay. Gotcha. Do you go to the spa? Do you get massages? Do you? No. None of Unless that. it's a gift. Unless it's a gift. Not even once a year you'll do it yourself? No. Okay. Cool. So, let's see. 25, 20, plus the 100, plus 16, plus 120. All right, twenty-seven fifty-six. Look at that. All right, thirty-five hundred minus twenty-seven fifty-six. Now we're at seven forty-four cash flow. Anything else you can think of, or is this about as accurate as we're gonna get? Pretty close. Okay, so down here's what I do with my clients. I round that number down, create even more buffer, and say that you're cash flowing 700 and you bring in 35 a month. You said you have good credit. Yes, yes, I do. Where are we at? Last time you checked. Um, I think I was at like uh, 810. 810. Round of applause. Okay. Okay, somebody is prepped and ready to go for Velocity Banking, more yeah, than likely. I mean, yeah. Okay. I try and who do you bank credit. with? I bank with um, U.S. Bank because that's who my mortgage is through. And because I have a mortgage with them, I get a free checking account, deluxe checking account. So my checking account is through them. And I bank with BFG Credit Union. BFG. Is that a local? Fed yeah, it's a federal. Yes. Okay. And I also, let's see, is that it? Looks like I got rid of my Chase. I have two credit cards with Chase, but they're, like I said, they're zero balance. Okay. Yeah, we won't play with okay. Chase. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm interested in this one, this BFG Credit Union. So, next step in our, once we got our four major numbers, which we just gathered, it took us just under an hour to do that, right? And that's sometimes, that's about a phone call. We just did a phone call. We just did a coaching call. This is how my day goes, 
with clients. My first interaction, this is what we're doing. Now, most of the time, my clients will, like, I, I prep them. I'm like, bring, get this as clear as you can. So now that we have it, we want to redirect cash flow, right? That was the next step. So when we're looking at what Stephanie has been doing, she is overpaying on a 0% debt here and a 0% debt here. What's the problem with that, Tim? <laughs> so we got Stephanie is overpaying on 0% interest on this credit card to discover, right? And she's overpaying on this 0% credit card. What's the problem with that? When we overpay on, on interest, uh, overpay on debt that isn't charging me interest. Right. So, but, all right, so I'll, I'll, I'll redo it. So what, what Tim said and what I agree with and sure. majority of my clients agree with is when we overpay on a debt such as your student loans that have been deferred for the last two years or you overpay on a 0% credit card, it's not charging you any interest. It's a debt. I know you owe it. I know you want to pay it off but it's not charging you any interest. Meanwhile, you got debt over here that is charging you interest, right? And that's, that debt is increasing, whereas the debt that's on zero is just, it's staying the same, the, the, the principal amount. So if we were to redirect where she's overpaying here and overpaying here, that increases cash flow, and then we can throw it on something that is charging me interest like this and like this card, the, the 24, uh, 84, 34. Right, because the only one that I'm paying um, the interest rate, which is the credit card is, is 8.9 for the credit union. Yep. Right here? You're right. 8.9%? It's 8.9%. Okay. And everything else is at zero. But the only reason I'm paying more is because I do want to get it paid off before the interest kicks in. That's totally my agree. that's my train of thought. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to have to pay any interest. I want to pay what it costs. I so agree. that's why I'm paying over. But I see what you're saying by right. not paying. Yeah. Um, so 966, I'm going to times that by 1.5% of the balance. And I'm going to assume the, the monthly minimum payment is probably like, 25 bucks, maybe less than that, right, for that card. And then for the 1500 I'll just do 2%, yeah. Monthly payments probably somewhere around $30 or less. Most credit cards, when they're on zero interest, will charge you between 1% and 2% of the balance, right. right? So it's like basically nothing. Right. So by you agreeing... Right? If you agree with this, you don't have to do this. It's just a matter of redirecting cash flow and making it stronger towards a debt that we could pay off and then we come back okay. to that debt before it expires. Right. Okay. So what, what you need to find out for us is when does that expire and when does that card expire? Would you happen to have that on you or no? Um, well, actually, like... Because you said you just got that. Yeah, so my first payment is in July, so it'll right. end... July 23. It, right. Right. So we got time. All right, July 2023. 20, and then... And Discover is probably in August of this year. Okay, so we got... I don't have a lot of time. I got to okay. get that one paid. All right. So August 2022 is when this expires. So 150 minus 25, I could redirect 125 back to here. And then we were going to probably pay somewhere around this number. So I'll do 136 minus 30. So we'll call it 100 bucks from here and here. So that's 225. We're back up to 925, right, in cash flow. 
Now, it's towards the end of the month. Now, most blue collar, white collar workers, right? Most of us who have jobs, we're employed. Usually you get paid um, weekly, bi-weekly. Usually you have your bills at the beginning of the month, like your mortgage, your car payments are usually at the beginning of the month. And then as we approach the end of the month, pretty much all your bills have been paid, right? And there's this window period where there's really like not that many bills and that's where you see your cash flow towards the end of every month. Like I've worked with thousands of people at this point and that's most of the time that's the case. The cash flow shows up at the end of the month. You're like, okay, spent all this money. This is what I got left. It's 925. So granted, based on what Stephanie has told us, she's, she's been sacrificing. She's not wasting money. She's not going out, right? So I don't have to really tell her about how she can cut back even more, right? You've already done that. So congratulations, right? That's great. You got a system going. Now it's a matter of how do we direct our cash flow where we know where it's going and we can see a, a result from that, get excited month to month, right? So we're approaching the end of the month. So you should have somewhere around this in your bank account. Would you agree with that? Yeah. If you signed into your bank account right now. Oh, yeah, I got more. Yeah. You got more, right? But I'm assuming there's maybe some other bill that's coming up. But we should have somewhere around this, right? Now, if you're up for it, you can take what's left over and pay this off, right? So that's 252 gone, done. Okay, great. So I'm going to go with the low number, not even including what gets redirected because this won't show up till next month because I'm assuming you've already made the payment for uh, this one. Yeah, because what I do is I go in online and just I prepay. Like I put in for the date already. You pay early. So like, no, I don't pay early because I said, you know, I thought they said you're not supposed to do that. So I put it in for the due date. Mm -hmm. So whatever date that it's due, I, I at the beginning of the month, I go in and say, for it to be taken out on the due date. Okay. So when you pay that, let's say that 252, you could pay it today, tomorrow, before the due date, right? Yeah, you, I could pay. You could yeah. wipe it out, right? Or you could wait till the due date. Either way, that'll bring the 700, we should have 448 left, right? That 448, we could apply to this debt, right? But you said that this card is about to expire. Yeah, I think I need so to get that be, one paid We want to be conscious of that. Do you know what the interest rate is on this one? It's zero right now. Right, but do you know what it would go to? Um, I think it's going to go, like, I think it's going to go like the 15. 15, right, so higher yeah. than this one. 8.9% is not a not a killer, right? So I'm, I'm not too concerned with that. But what we can do to really eliminate this just completely, just to avoid that from expiring on interest, right? There's two ways to go about it. I could either A, attack interest, right? Logically, this makes sense. I could attack interest. This is what is charging me interest. I understand this is at zero and it's gonna expire, but I could logically go after this for the next few months. This is called debt avalanche, right? Where we go after um, the highest interest that you're being charged. That's, that's like the debt avalanche theory. It's going after interest rather than smallest to highest debt. Right, go ahead. Okay, so it's a question. So is it better to just, like, okay, I can pay those off, right? So is it better to pay it off or is it better to have money in the bank? That's a question I have. That's a very I good mean, question. I want to know. Because I, I don't know why I don't pay it off because I, I could. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, is it, so so, is, is it so, better to pay it off? So my, my response when my clients ask me this question is I, I throw it back on them and I ask them, what's the most efficient thing? Like, in your personal finance because what logically makes sense 
may not actually align with what's going on in your household, right? Is there a, a big expense coming up in the next few months? You know, do you have a family member in the hospital and you've got these other bills that are coming up? So it's, when it comes to working with me, I'm very fluid with what works most efficient for your plan in, and then how do we relate that to what the goal is. You said earlier, I want to pay off debt, right? So in this case, having money in the bank sounds like just, this is a position of safety, right? right. Something comes up, I know I got some money right, here, right. okay? Another way to think about it, and, and, and Tim might uh, verify this for me, is I can either have money in the bank that is not earning me anything and the value of that dollar is constantly decreasing over time, the, the purchasing power of it. I can have money in the bank, it'll make me feel safe, okay. Or I could have access to money in the event something does happen and then have a strategy to eliminate that, pay nothing in interest. In this case, it would be having access to debt, right? So I could, you know, again, this is what you feel most comfortable with. Don't let me influence you. It's, it's just a matter of what do you feel most comfortable with that you can sleep at night? Having $1,000 in your savings account or just, just, just seeing cash there it makes you feel safe. Or you can say, all right, I'm going to attack the debt. And then if and when a unexpected expense comes up, emergency of some type, I've already accounted for it. But before I use my cash that I would have had sitting in the bank, that cash is in the credit card. Most of our unexpected expenses, you're able to pull out a card, swipe it. Yeah. You got 30 days to pay that off. You already accounted for unexpected expenses, right? So you swipe the card, unexpected expense occurred, I got sick, someone went to the hospital, um, this bill came up, oh, forgot about that. Okay, you give yourself 30 days to, to pay that off. We should, in most cases, have the cash flow to remove that debt. And even if we did it, we have a strategy to remove that debt and pay virtually nothing in interest, right? Because the cool part is when you run that expense through a credit card, you're getting cash back rewards, right? And some points. So let's say you ran $1,000, right, through um, a credit card and you get 2% back on 1,000 bucks. What's that, $20? Yeah, 20 bucks. So $20 in cash back rewards, $1,000 expense, right? This is an example. I now owe a thousand on that credit card for 30 days. The due date comes up. Let's just say I only have 500. Okay, so now you're going to be in debt. Now you're going to get charged $500 in interest, right? Uh, charged from the credit card what you owe. And let's just say it's what did you say? Um, it's going to like 15 percent, right? So $500 times 15 percent is $75 for the whole year. Divide that by 12 is $6.25 for that month. You just got $20 in cash back rewards. So what's my borrowing cost in the event I have an unexpected emergency? Zero, right? She got the $20 in cash back rewards for swiping the expense, right? Boom, it's on the card. And then in the event I don't have the money to pay it off in full, I'm gonna get charged interest for maybe say one month. Might pay six to ten dollars in interest. Paid it in interest, but I earned it in cash back, so it's called offsetting. It's a wash. That's pretty cool. So the unexpected expense taken care of, it doesn't deviate from the mission of paying off debt. I didn't have to have that thousand dollars in a savings account doing nothing. That thousand was working for me 
in my debt payoff method, saving me interest, et cetera, et cetera. So based on that information, then you say, is it better to have money in my bank or focus on what the, what the goal is, which is to increase cash flow, increase income, put me in a better financial position. If and when an ex unexpected expense emergency comes up, I have a strategy to, to knock that out, right? Um, so coming back to it, we can agree without a doubt, we, we wanna get rid of that 252, be done with it. And we have two options. For the sake of just getting rid of the August one because it's a smaller it's debt, way. right? So that we just turn back on the debt snowball. You see how fluid this is? Like we can go from velocity to avalanche to debt snowball to see which one makes most sense. So we can turn on our debt snowball hat and just go to the very next debt, 448 minus 966 for the month of June. July, that's done, right? That'll be done. Then we move here to the, to the card. We can do that or we can flip it. We can ignore this, right, and focus on this, right? And we could, to get our feet wet, we could start doing velocity banking on this. But because you lack the, the concept, the knowledge, you're going to have to watch some videos. You're going to have to take some time, effort out of your day to really develop the concept for yourself. You know, I don't think in a three-day environment like this will you pick up everything but you're going to get a really really good understanding because you know we're you and i are right here rather than in the video so i'm hoping that my skills will be even more effective than than via video but essentially we could um go that route or we could play it safe right play it safe pay this off and then we come to this yeah I, right? I could probably I like that i could pay the first one and the, and the 252 off. Okay. I could be done with that. I mean, I really could. Just, Let's be done with it. And right? I don't know why I let a wrinkle check. Right? You see what I'm saying? So we're done with it. <laughs> now, in the next month, I should be done with these two cards. No doubt. Yeah, I could be done with it. Now I'm moving on to this card. Right. The 248434. Right. I can apply the debt snowball concept, which is just taking the net cash flow at the end of each and every month and making a principal payment to the credit card. And that should be wiped out within like three months or less, right? So two, let's just run that number real quick. So two, four, eight, four, 34 is what I owe. Um, you're overpaying right 150 we have a cash flow increase of 25 because i already counted it here so 25 and the 30 uh oh no 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 25 and the 50 right so we could say 25 50 so 75 bucks our cash flow should be back at a thousand bucks, right? Seventy-five plus nine twenty-five. Okay. So by next month, and I'm and I'm stretching the timeline on purpose, right? You're you're gonna beat my numbers. End of July, I should cash flow a thousand bucks. You you keep the same system. Right? Don't deviate. Thousand bucks. Two forty eighty four thirty four. Now I know that number is going to be less a month from now, but I'm gonna use the same number just to you know make it pretty easy. And we can definitely estimate that July, right? This is July. This is August. Right? That's two, September, done, right? So September or sooner, 
snap by that snowball alone, September or sooner, that should be done, right? Now, for the sake of showing what Velocity Banking can do, I could use that credit card. Do you know what the, I think it has it here. That's the BFG, right? Yes. So it's a $3,000 credit limit, right? Yes. Okay. I look at all of your expenses, right? And I, and I, and I evaluate the ones that can be run through a credit card, right? And so what we could do, right? This is where, debt's no, uh, where, where Velocity Banking comes into play, is from your paycheck, the day I get paid, you evaluate what bills can be run through a credit card. Obviously, gas, food, house maintenance, um, makeup products, um, even some bills like the internet, maybe your gas bill, maybe your car insurance. Some of those bills oftentimes can get run through a credit card. You add all that up. And from your paycheck, depending on the due dates of those bills, we can send a, a lump sum, call it a chunk, payment to the credit card, effectively lowering the balance of the card itself. Now, here's what's interesting with credit cards, right? Is when you do that, you manipulate the, the interest for that month down to what the new balance would be. So I'm gonna take the 130, the 200, that's 230. House maintenance, 310. Let's do 410, five. I'm assuming you could run anywhere from 500 upwards of a thousand bucks through a credit card, is that safe, of, of expenses? Right? So just yes. stay with me, stay with me, right? So anywhere from 500 to roughly $1,000 of expenses, right? This is expenses. I have $1,000 in cash flow per month. So you add that. In one month of doing velocity banking, I could effectively bring the 2484 down to 484. So I manipulate the interest for that one month down to peanuts, like nothing, right? Now you're wondering, well, how do I pay the bill? Well, first you got your paycheck and before you used cash to pay those bills, you pulled out your credit card, you swipe, you swipe, you swipe, your paycheck pays the credit card as you're swiping. What that does is let's say your due date is the first of every month, right? And it's June 24th and you make a payment. It satisfies the monthly minimum payment for that month. You pay ahead of time, which means that the last six days or so, you're not getting charged interest on 2484. You're getting charged interest on 1484 or a thousand bucks, much less, right? And then what's interesting is, let's say the due date's the first. Your closing date is, say, the fifth. The closing date means the date that the credit cycle begins and you'll get the statement saying you owe us this for the next month, right? So let's say this is July. Next month after the 4th of July, you owe us this. Now what's really cool is during that period of time, no matter how much money you run on the credit card, you will not get charged any interest for that window period because the cycle ended, right? So now I'm, this is called uh, interest floating. 
you're floating your expense on a card that's not charging you any interest for roughly 25 or so days, right? And then by the next month, for the month of July, you would have dumped your cash flow in, you would have swiped your bills, you effectively manipulated the rate down to nearly zero in this case, if that card offers us some um, cash back rewards, if any, it may or may not. I don't think it, I don't think it does, no. Even if it didn't, you're manipulating this 8.9 to like 4%, even less than that. What you actually pay in interest, it's gonna be pennies on the dollar, right? So what happens is, instead of waiting till September to be done with it, technically speaking, you you're have it paid off by a month and a half faster, possibly the beginning of uh, August, mid-August. Technically, it's paid off. You still have to swipe the card to pay your bills. But you've created a 30-day extension on your bills because of the card itself, almost, right? And what ends up happening is the credit card balance you'll, you're going to owe leading up to September, right? And then it'll be officially done. But the beautiful part is you paid less interest, right? Now, this isn't a huge balance, right? So we're, we're, we're disputing dollars and cents at this point. But I'm sure you can imagine if when we get some other case studies of people with $20,000 of credit card debt, $50,000, right, $75,000, there's a serious amount of money that can be saved once we start kind of ramping up our financial strategy. So I think if I was in your shoes and I didn't know about velocity banking, I would not do it uh, or try to do it because what can happen, all that stuff I just said, I know it's probably like flying over your head. Some things are sticking. Last thing I would want you to do is make a mistake, right? So I think safely speaking, and, and would you agree, this is good results? I pay off three debts by September or sooner. Not bad, right? So all the credit card debt should be gone. We can hold her accountable to that. Is there someone in here that you are friends with or you know? Can you point to them? One friend? <laughs> Boom. That's your accountability partner. This is what really creates results, right. yeah. accountability. Right. Right. That's why people pay for coaching. That's why people pay right. tens of thousands of dollars in, in the world for coaching, right? In the kingdom, it's called counseling, right? right. So you're receiving counsel. Counseling is voluntary, no cost. Increased, same value. So you can go out into the world and pay tens of thousands of dollars, or you can stay in the kingdom, right? Right. And then in addition, because you're receiving such great value, you find it in your heart to give back what you feel is worth. That is called kingdom protocol. I give to a king or a queen. That's a queen. You're a queen. Whenever you visit a queen, it's protocol. Got to bring a gift. And then because you brought a gift, now she has to compete and give you a bigger gift back. Her gift is accountability to you. I would say that's more valuable than money itself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, your name? Carmen. Carmen holds Stephanie accountable. That is the exchange value that's occurring here. We could watch the replay. She has to pay off these debts by September or sooner. If she doesn't, she has to explain to you why she didn't do that. Oh, boy. <laughs> I like it. Now, yeah, I can do it. once you've done this, <laughs> is this good so far? Is this good? Yeah. You getting value from this? Okay. In addition, Carmen, hold her accountable, you have to watch Denzel's videos, right? You're going to start with the Velocity Banking pregame work playlist. It's a couple videos. You're going to go on my YouTube channel, and you're going to watch it, and then you're going to report back to her and say, I watched the videos. Once you complete, okay. all right? Okay. Once, you, once you do that, 
you should be prepared, right? And, and you'll have additional knowledge to approach a bank to obtain what is called a personal line of credit, right? Or depending on how much equity is in your property, we could obtain maybe a home equity line of credit, either in the first or second position. Now, some of these terms you may not know, that's okay. I got a ton of videos. I'm not gonna waste my time teaching what has already been taught. So, cause I want you to, I wanna maximize our time here together by giving you real actionable steps to take, right? One of those steps, accountability. You're gonna educate yourself. So when you say you turn the TV off, you're gonna turn Denzel's videos on, no. right? And you're gonna commit to watching videos. You're gonna start with the pregame work, but then you're gonna lead into, I have a playlist called All About the Line of Credit. And I take you A through Z on the questions to ask the bank. How much should I apply for? When should I apply? What should my credit score be? What do I tell the bank when they ask me, what do I need the credit line for? How do I know it's a line of credit? How do I calculate simple interest versus amortized interest? I'm gonna dive all into it, all right? And by that time, you should be well-knowledged enough by September to make a move to position yourself to get a debt weapon. Debt tool is the lingo, right? And then we can start doing velocity banking uh, either on the car note, that's at 0%. It's at zero, and it's going so, to be, my last payment is in December, so I'll be done with that. 0% the whole time? 0% the whole time. So we're going to ignore that debt, right, and just keep paying the monthly payment because right. it'll be wiped out. Because at first I was paying double and trying to pay it off, but they said, why would you do that when it's 0%? So I was going to pay it off early, uh -huh. and I was like, right, right, right. don't do it. So now, yeah, but my last payment is in December. Perfect. So I'll be done. So then other than that, we just got the mortgage left. Right, and I'm, uh, I want to do the four-year thing. No, I want to pay it off early, definitely. Oh, you will. You only owe Because my interest rate is 2.5. And actually, I just bought the house in October. And so I started paying $100 since the first month. I paid $100 extra on the principal. And I've been doing that since I forgot to mention that, too. Mm -hmm. I've been paying $100 extra on the principal. Okay. Y'all feel good? Yeah. I feel good. Like, we just paid off debt. Like we're foreseeing it. We're speaking as though, wow, what's the scripture on that? Speak as though it were there. What's the, what, someone say it the right way. That's what we just did, right? You see how we take the spiritual part, mechanics. Y'all know the spiritual part. You guys can quote scripture better than I can. So I'm a baby when it comes to the, the, the scripture. I don't know how to quote scripture yet. I'm not a pastor. Although I've been told by many I could be one or an apostle. They're throwing terms at me I'm not familiar with. I'm still learning. But you take that stuff and just make it mechanical. Then it's, it's like even more real. It's like tangible. I can touch it. I can touch it and, and feel it and map it out. So let's give Stephanie a round of applause. That was phenomenal. That is brave. And should we go on break or what are we doing? Question? Go ahead. Let's, let's do a question. Because I know a break's coming up. We're going to get ready for lunch. <clears throat> I don't like speaking in TV. But Say your name. Pardon me? Say your name and then question. Cordelia Trailer. Uh, Say again. Cordelia Trailer. Cordelia. Trailer. Uh -huh. Pleasure. Okay, my question is, I had got a credit card uh, for some furniture, and I didn't use it because they didn't put it on there yet because they hadn't delivered it. But I closed it out, not used it, and I was told that I shouldn't have did that, that it messes up my credit. Yeah. Okay, now, yeah. so I was okay. just, is that, I shouldn't have did that? Correct, you shouldn't have done that. Okay. Most, uh, most credit people in the credit game usually do not recommend you close your, your credit cards for something like that. Um, in, in my 
case, um, when I when I get credit cards, I, I let the banks close them on me after so much inactivity. But I usually like to leverage all the all the credit utilization, right? Because if I have access to a hundred thousand dollars of credit cards, right, like over 10, 15 different credit cards, mm -hmm. and that equals up to a hundred grand. But I'm, and then let's say on a month to month basis, I'm using one or two credit cards, swiping. I know in my business I'm running about maybe ten thousand plus per month through credit cards. Technically, my utilization is only 10%. But if I didn't have access to that and maybe it was only 50,000, I'm using 10, that utilization goes up, it affects my credit score. All right? Okay, so I messed up here. That's okay. <laughs> the beautiful thing about credit, it's fluid, right? And the way they're doing credit today, they're more so paying attention to your behavior, how you use credit. Mm -hmm. That's how they factored in these, these new, the way they're scoring people now. So we can easily turn that ship around if, if it went down, whatever the case. Is okay. that one question? No, I have one more. One more, okay. Um, I was told that when you pay your credit card, uh, say like, um, say I got a credit card and my payment is $100 a month. Um, I was told that I take 50, half of that, and pay it two weeks early, and then the other 50 pay it, um, I think it's that, Right before date, the due date? Or, the due or date, on the right. due date? On the due date or three days before something. Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. Was. You learned that from a credit expert? No, someone told me that. So. Just, just, just someone. Okay. So um, I tend to communicate with a lot of different credit people um, in the past. I have one in particular. Her name is Brittany Green. And she taught me about this 15 three day rule. Anyone familiar with that? All right, Tim, you know about it. 15 three-day rule says, I pay the bill 15 days into the cycle, right? So say day one, I get the credit card, it's June 1st. By June 15th, however much money I um, spent on the card, divide it by three, pay that amount, right? Then three days before the due date, make another payment, right? 15 days in, three days before the due date, and then on the due date, you pay the balance off. This is ideal if you are using a credit card that is already at a zero balance, right? and you're just using it to run bills and expenses that you know you're gonna pay off each and every month, instead of just paying it one time a month, you're letting the bureaus know a pattern, behavior. And so you're showing three consecutive payments on a monthly basis, you do that for three to six months straight, creates a pattern, you look better to the credit bureaus if you intend to apply for something, right? now. If I'm in debt on a credit card that is charging me interest and my goal is to pay off debt, I could care less what my credit score is. My goal is pay off debt. I don't care what my credit score is. It's going to get better as I pay the debts off. It's gonna improve. So this might go out the door, that particular strategy or the strategy that, that your person said. Now. Let's say you're trying to position yourself to get a line of credit. You don't have an 810 credit score like Miss Stephanie, right? So let's say you're less, like where Tim was, he said like around 550 or some sort. Now, I'm not sure if you practiced this initially. I'm not sure. After the fact? Yeah. To 770. Right, so that's amazing. So let's say I'm in a lower credit score position. I came across the Velocity Banking concept. I love it. Oh my God, I want to do it. It's amazing. And you want to get the line of credit, then using this strategy might accelerate that. I usually tell people it takes about three to six months to position yourself, have a relationship with the bank, talk to the, the loan officer, and then you make your move.
right? So the 15 three-day rule is pretty cool. You can, you can look that up or you can look up Brittany Green on uh, YouTube or Instagram. I like her. But if there's an in-house, here's, here's my thing. I'm very big on stimulating economic growth locally here. So if there's a credit expert in this church here, go to them. Spend your money with them, right? Because they have the same passion for this church like you do because you come here. This is your home church, right? So before you think about spending your $5,000 on a credit guru, spend that money here in the church. Same with me. Like, you don't have to pay me a dollar, right, to, to have my attention. I have a strategy in the folder how you can get access to me, financial counseling, for free, right? And then I already, you know, discussed with the Lord, listen, I'm going to be giving in secret, giving publicly. When you give publicly, the, the reward stays here in heaven, if, I'm not under, if I understand that correctly. When you don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, right, there, there's a reward in heaven that comes later, right? So <laughs> there's, there's some things that I'm doing on the back end that I don't want nobody to know. I'm going to do it in secret. And so that's me building, you know, in, in heaven. Well, there's people here who have businesses that can get you the resources and the tools that you need before you go hire the guru on, online. Full transparency. I'm a guru, right? That's what they call me on, on YouTube now, in this space, right? I'm probably one of the few people that you'll see when you type velocity banking, right? If there's someone in this church that does what I do, similarly, close to it, work with them, right? Let me, let me come in, give the principles, give the foundations, and, and you, you stimulate economic growth here, and again, there's an exchange of value, like-kind value, whether you get it for free and then you give something back to them. You sow seed, whether it's watching their kids, you, you sow seed into their business, uh, you tithe more to the church to achieve the church goals that they have in mind, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's good. That was the question. Yes. So um, I talk really loud, so this use the mic. Okay. Um, so my name is Carmen Williams. So I have a question. So me and my husband are going through a pro program called Divi. Um, Divi Homes. I don't know if you are. Divi. Yeah, Divi. I know Divi. Okay. So we're going through this program. We've been in this program now for almost three years. And while you're in there, you're renting to own the home. And so I like the example that you were saying, um, how you displayed with Stephanie's uh, income and everything. But my question is, we, we're getting in position to buy a home. And so when you were saying it looks better for it to be in the, it doesn't look better for it to be in the bank. Well, when you go, when I go to, uh-oh. No, no, no. I'll, okay. I'll, you know what? Finish, finish, finish. Okay. When I go to the bank and now that we're, we're working with realtors, they want to see bank accounts, you know, every time you go in there right. monthly, they want you to keep presenting these bank accounts, I mean, your bank account statements. And so it looks good, the money that is in the bank, but, and I, and I only have two credit cards. Right. I have two credit cards and... um the credit cards is high because um, Amazon has became my best friend. <laughs> so that's the only reason why there is a debt on the credit card is because Amazon keeps showing up mm. like every week. I'm, I'm, I got to I got to I got to say this and be real. Uh -huh. Amazon is my best friend. And so Amazon's come every day with boxes. Mm. I know that that's like. So and what's in those boxes is clothes and shoes. Oh, my God. 
I'm, I'm, about to, I'm, I'm telling my business because I need to be free. I'm almost ready to cry because it's, it's really bad because I keep saying to myself, I'm not going to do it anymore. I have the app on my phone, and I have made a promise with someone. They were supposed to keep me accountable. They're not here right now for me to delete the app off my phone, and I still have not. No. There so you, I still yeah. have not. Stephanie about to hold you accountable right, I, right now. Right now. Uh -uh. The reason the reason I can't have her deleted is because I have ten things. No, I'm telling the truth. Ten things that is coming this week into next week, and so I have to check on when they're going to come. No, you don't. I have to keep. Trust me, Amazon gonna deliver. So and and I make myself feel better because I'll buy my husband something so he won't say to me. You you got Amazon coming again. Mm -hmm. So the credit cards are, it's only like three three thousand on the credit card, both of them together that I owe in debt. Um, and so, but I spend. I'm be honest. I spend about four hundred dollars. <laughs> no judging. No judging. I was judging. That was judging. No, no, no. So I spent about four hundred dollars a month, or even maybe more, on, in Amazon. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to your point on having money in the bank. I think there was a question there. Yes. In your particular situation, you know, if I'm acquiring a property, then the strategy again. This is where it becomes fluid. Strategy must change. Where? Wait a minute. I do need to keep some money in the bank to show the banks. She already got a home. She already got a home. So for this is why I want to go one by one with everybody in here because it's going to be different. Every financial situation is going to be different. That's why, you know, for example, save seven baby steps with Dave Ramsey may not work for everybody, and that's okay. You know, and I don't want you to feel bad about it. I'm not going to call you stupid like Dave Ramsey calls his people. That's not, that's not what we're going to do here. We're going to analyze where are you at, how much debt do you need to acquire, and how do we, you know, best position ourselves to get there, right? Yeah. So I, I definitely want to encourage maybe you'll be next or, you know, whomever wants to be next. Put your numbers on the board. We'll go again maybe in the next session, but I know I see Pastor walking around. Um, my <laughs> timer's off, so I'm wondering if I'm, I'm, wondering if I'm in trouble. Um, <laughs> I know we're going to come on. Come on, everybody. Let's give him a great round of applause. This is my brother, my friend. He's doing a great job.